the Residential Design and Build Video Network, in conjunction with Powerhouse Advisors, presents the Powerhouse Marketing Series. Hello, I'm Wendy Cohen, President of Powerhouse Advisors, and we're here to talk about smart powerhouse marketing tips. Specifically this week, we're going to talk about connecting with past clients and why that's important. Many people um, will tell you, and I, I hope that you're actually experiencing this yourself, that your past clients are your best source of business. So I think I'm probably preaching to the converted by telling you that, but I do want to reinforce some of the ways you can do that and some of the ways past clients can bring new business for you. For example, um, the first thing is your past clients, if you're a custom home builder or uh, an architect, your past client might want to do another small project that um, maybe wasn't done originally or maybe the house is 10, 15 years old and it's time to make the house um, you know, more current and they really want to keep the same quality and integrity that you did in their project to begin with. So I really think your past clients um, and, and actually talking to those that are from this year, last year, and even many years ago, they're your greatest uh, source of potential repeat business. Not only that, many of um, our um, customers, clients, have told us that they would do a second, third, and even a vacation home with the same you know, architects and builders, interior designers that they worked with in the past. So because they have um, proven um, experience with you, they know all the things that you bring to the table, plus you've kept in close contact with them and told them all the new things that you've learned and the cutting edge ideas that are out there in either green building or new designs or how to, um, you know, uh, take your um, uh, home and, and create a better lifestyle for your family and as far as entertaining or just daily living. So your past clients can not only help you with other um, avenues with their existing home or project that you did for them, but they also can be doing new projects. And of course, they have family, they have children, their, children's, their children grow up and they need homes. And if they've spent the last how many ever years it's been since you did their project talking about you and, and uh, you know, repeating the great experience that they had, communicating that, then of course their children, when they grow up, they're going to want to use you as well. So past clients, just in their own right, from their sphere of influence and their family, can be great business for you. Let's talk about how past clients actually have a sphere of influence. And if you think about it, think about your sphere of influence, then think about each one of your past clients and their sphere of influence. So not only their family, which we already talked about, but their friends, and then how about their business associates, and then how about their religious organization, and how about their charity. So if you think about your past client as kind of a viral opportunity for you to really share the wealth and what you bring to them, it, it's um, you know probably one of the least expensive ways for you to market yourself. Finally, what I would want to say is I've often um, encouraged all of my clients and I have in my own experience with my business um, brought my past clients to events or um, invited them to accompany me or brought them as a guest to events because they're my best spokesperson. I'm standing talking to a new um, potential prospect that they don't know and I don't know and often the conversation comes up and they're going to be from an outside perspective, a great resource for that new person that we're talking to about what I can provide for them or what you can provide for them. So again, I encourage you to look at your past clients and all the different ways that you can bring them with you to help you grow your business. Now, how do you do that? How do you, you know, capture um, a relationship and keep it going after your project is done? Because of course, during the project, it's, you know, it's a love affair and they, they want to um, talk about you and they want to share what they're doing with their friends and family but now that their house is finished and they're back to their lives and they're back to business how do they how do you engage with them and keep the, keep the conversation going well let's start with the easiest thing which is picking up the phone and making a phone call so what I always recommend is let's sit down and let's do a plan let's take out a calendar let's figure out on a monthly basis how we can have impactful personal touches with our past clients. And of course, we can start with the least expensive, which is phone calls. But I don't recommend making a phone call without having something of value to talk about. It could be social, 
It could be educational, something about their home or something about um, them reducing maintenance costs or um, utility costs, or it could be charitable or something that you know is of value to them. If they happen to be a, a you know, a, an intense golf player, then maybe it's something about a new golf course that opened up. So personal phone calls is always the best way. Obviously that sounds pretty easy, but sometimes for um, clients that's not so easy to do. So if it's easier for you to have a, you know, index card or uh, kind of something written down on what you would might want to chat about with them, then do that. But absolutely, t you know, take the um, advice and make those phone calls. Another um, aspect of touching past clients is actually making visits. So one of the things that we did with a client of ours was we said, you know, at the one year anniversary, call your past client or maybe at the two year anniversary if you're already calling them at the one year um, to do their one year walkthrough. At the two year, call them and say, this is your anniversary. I don't know if you realize it, but you've been in your home now two years. I'd love to make an appointment to stop by when you get home from work or on the weekend and spend a little bit of time with you walking through your home and seeing, seeing how your home is living and breathing. So now you get that face to face contact and you get to ask them, how are they doing? How's the family? How are they enjoying the home? And of course, you can ask them if they know of anybody who might be interested in your services because I'm sure they're very um, proud to be able to recommend you since you provided such great service to them. Um, a, a perfect opportunity to do either of those two first two suggestions, which would be personal phone calls or stopping by and visiting, is the holidays. If you don't want to wait until their two-year anniversary, there's many holidays that are not religious holidays that you can stop by. If it's a pumpkin at Thanksgiving, uh, excuse me, a pumpkin at, at Halloween, or um, you know uh, something red, white, and blue at the Fourth of July, maybe it's red, white, and blue jelly bellies or whatever it is, stopping by and visiting them. One of my favorite examples is bringing um, a fresh hot apple pie um, to them during Thanksgiving, stopping by. Most people are home during Thanksgiving. They're preparing for their family to come to their home. There's nothing more um, impressive than you stopping by with a fresh hot apple pie or pumpkin pie that they can serve to their family and friends and say, by the way, my architect, my builder, my interior designer, who I haven't spoken, who I haven't, uh, you know, been in bus done a business project with them in the last year, stopped by to visit me and we're all um, eating. Uh, the gift they left with us. Um, social and dining events are also a great opportunity. You know, often what I try to do is figure out when can we do an annual appreciation event with um, my cl my consulting client, being a builder or an architect or interior designer, and where they can invite all of their past clients to one venue at one time, and then they can all talk amongst themselves. And in that case, I always try to have it at a location that. Is, is puts the builder or architect in the best light and that would be obviously a project or their office or something that they can share. And if not, and if it's at a restaurant, we put posters or photos up of projects that they're working on because usually your past clients are interested in what you're doing and what's new. Um, that, that's part of the love of um, the project they did with you. And finally, educating them and always being that go-to source. If you provide value, when you contact them or call them or send them an email, they're going to want to hear from you because you're always providing something that's valuable to them. Give them a reason to refer you when you do make those contacts. Tell them about a new project, some new land that you might have found, or a new um, design, or a new um, material that you found um, on, on your last either vacation or home builder show that you went to. So take advantage of these tips and really make an effort to come up with a real solid plan that you can consistently implement either yourself and your staff with your past clients. We welcome you to join us at powerhouseadvisors.com. Click through to the Powerhouse Smart link where we discuss this smart marketing tip and many other often with business professionals um, throughout the United States and we love to share our insight with you. Thank you.